In this video we are going to explore resistors. The main topics will be true hole resistors, SMD resistors, resistor applications, potentiometers and their applications, and various types of resistors such as fusible resistors, MOVs, NTCs, LDRs and shunt resistors. Let's start with true hole resistors. These are one of the most common resistor types and great for hobby electronics because they are very easy to use with a breadboard unlike SMD resistors so we have three common types about this resistor first and most outdated one is the carbon composite resistor you might find them in older electronics like an old television motherboard the resistant material in these resistors is carbon which is similar to pencil lead in fact pencil lead can be used as a resistor this one has a resistance of 2 kilo ohms as you can see. When a voltage is applied, it gets really hot because electrical energy is wasted as heat. Let's continue with the video so we don't get sued by Edison. The second type is the carbon film resistor, which is commonly used for prototyping. This type is made from a carbon film deposited on a ceramic core. The resistance is determined by the thickness and length of the carbon film. The third type is a metal film resistor. Although it's a bit more expensive, it's more reliable. This resistor is made by deposing a thin layer of metal onto a ceramic core. The resistance is controlled by the thickness of the metal layer. So how we tell the resistance of these guys? You can basically calculate it using the color code of the resistor. So let's calculate this one using this resistor table. The first color digit is brown, which represents 1. The second color digit is black, which represents 0. The third color digit is red, which is the multiplier, 10 to the power of 2 or we can say 100. So this is a 1 kilo ohm resistor. The gold color at the end indicates a tolerance of plus minus 5%, meaning the resistance can range between 950 and 1050 ohms. If you don't want to calculate it using this method, you can basically measure it with a multimeter or a component tester or use any of these resistor calculating websites or you can just ask ChatGPT about it we live in 2024 not 70s as you might guess the bigger the resistor the more power it can handle and yes you are correct this small resistor can handle up to 1 8 watt while this larger one can handle up to 2 watts if you apply more power than that this is what happens Another type of true hole resistor is the wire wound resistor. These usually have a power rating of more than 5 watts. For example, this one is rated for 10 watts and has a resistance of 10 ohms. Wire wound resistors can handle high temperatures very well, making them ideal for high power applications. These resistors can get very hot without failing and their casting is made out of ceramic, which gives them a larger thermal mass. We typically solder these resistors with a soldering iron. They are quite easy to work with as you can see. You can bend the leads to help the hold them in place, making the soldering process simple enough for anyone to do. Before we move on to the SMD resistors, I want to take a moment to talk about the sponsor of this video, PCBWay. PCBWay offers high quality PCB manufacturing, 3D printing, CNC machining and injection molding services. With PCBWay you can take your projects to a professional level. Be sure to check out their website through the link in the video description. A big thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Now let's continue. Let's continue with SMD resistors. On the screen you can see the most popular SMD packages and their power ratings. Let's take a closer look at 603 package resistor. As you can see the package name itself indicates the size of the resistor. In mass production, we can place machines handle and place this component. Fortunately, I have a very capable machine at home for that purpose. 
As you can see, a pair of tweezers is all you need to place these components. I typically use 603 resistors in my circuits, but if you are short on board space, you can use smaller ones. Just be careful, soldering smaller resistors can be quite challenging. Now let's talk about how to read values of these tiny resistors. This one has a 3 digit marking that reads 102. This means 10 multiplied by 10 to the power of 2, which equals 1 kilo ohm. Much easier to read than true hole resistors, right? As you can see on the screen, R500 means 0.5 ohms. The R acts as a decimal point. Super simple, right? But beware. These resistors have an evil brother, the EIA96 code, which is more complex to read. To decode these resistors, I usually use the same website I showed you earlier. Here are the most common values I'm familiar with. When it comes to the soldering methods, you can use a reflow oven, hot plate, hot air gun, which is my personal favorite, or even a soldering iron, though that can be challenging at times. Each method has its own pros and cons, but I won't dive into those now, because this video is focused on resistors, not soldering techniques. Now, let's delve into the PPM values of resistors, which are crucial for understanding how a resistor's resistance changes with temperature. To illustrate, if a resistor is rated with a PPM value of 100, it indicates that for every degree Celsius increase in temperature, the resistance of the resistor will change by 0.01%. This level of change is generally considered to be within the average range for many resistors, making it an important factor to consider in temperature sensitive applications. First, let's talk about the resistor symbol. We generally use these two symbols for fixed value resistors. All the resistor types I've explained so far are fixed value resistors, so this is the symbol that represents them. Now, let's discuss connecting resistors in series. Doing this increases the total resistance without affecting the power rating. For example, if we connect two 1 kilo ohm resistors in series, we'll get a 2 kilo ohm resistor with the power rating of 0.25 watts. It's a pretty simple to understand, right? What happens when we connect them in parallel? The total resistance decreases between these two points. Let's say we connected three 1 kilo ohm resistors in parallel. We can calculate the total resistance like this. The total resistance will be 333 ohms. But now the current is shared between the three resistors, so they can collectively handle 0.75 watts of power dissipation. Probably the most common use case for a resistor is to limit the current flowing through a circuit. For example, if we directly connect an LED to a 5V source, LED will likely to burn out. To prevent this, we place a resistor in series with the LED. What happens is that we have 5V and we want the LED to operate at a lower voltage. So we dissipate some of the energy across the resistor, allowing the LED to work safely. You can calculate the required resistor value using this formula. Our supply voltage is 5 volts, and I want my LED to run at 2.5 milliamps with a 4 volt voltage of 2 volts. So I'm using the formula. We find that the resistor needed is around 1 kilo ohm. This is how we calculate the resistor value. Now let's move on to other resistor applications. The first one I want to talk about is the pull down resistor. As you can see, in this circuit, the output of the button is connected to the ground via this resistor. We do this because without a pull down resistor, the input pin of the microcontroller might float when the button isn't pressed. This could result in the pin picking up noise from the environment, leading to an unstable or unpredictable input reading. Pull down resistors help us to eliminate this noise. Pull up resistors also work similarly, but with the polarities reversed. Another interesting thing you can do with a resistor is create a voltage divider. As you can see, I've connected these two 1 kilo ohm resistors in series and applied 5 volts at the top of the circuit. 
What's happening now is that 5 volts divided by 2000 ohms gives us 0.25 milliamps of current flowing through these resistors. When I measure the voltage in the middle, it shows 2.5 volts. We are effectively measuring the voltage drop across one of the resistors. Remember, our current is 2.5 milliamps and the resistor is 1 kilo ohm. So 2.5 milliamps multiplied by 1000 gives us 2.5 volts. I'm just using Ohm's law to calculate the output voltage. A voltage divider might seem like a reliable power source, but it's not. Its output voltage varies based on the input voltage, and you can't draw much current from it without causing a significant voltage drop. For example, if I connect a load here, you will see how much the voltage drops. We'll explore some applications of this circuit later in the video. Lastly, I want to talk about the frequency response of resistor. When we apply DC voltage, a 1 kilo ohm resistor will always be a 1 kilo ohm resistor. However, when we apply AC current, the situation changes. Ideally, a resistor's value shouldn't change with the frequency. But in real life, resistor can behave differently because nothing is perfect. Except for people who like and subscribe, of course. At high frequencies, a resistor can behave as if an inductor and capacitor are connected in parallel with it. If you are a beginner in electronics, this might not be important for you right now. Let's continue with potentiometers. A potentiometer is basically an adjustable voltage divider. This one says B1K, meaning the resistance of this potentiometer can be adjusted between 0 and 1000 ohms. The B indicates that resistance changes linearly. If you connect ground to the first terminal and a positive voltage to the last terminal, it will work like a voltage divider, providing you with an adjustable voltage at the middle pin. However, be careful, you can't draw much current from it, or it will get damaged. If you connect 5 volts to the first pin and leave the last pin unconnected, you now have an adjustable resistor. This setup controls current through the circuit. Remember, the resistance changes linearly. For example, if we read 2.5 kilo ohms on a 5 kilo ohm potentiometer, we know it's positioned in the middle. So, what do we use this for? Servo motors, for instance, use a potentiometer to calculate the angle of the motor shaft and joystick models use one to determine the position of the joystick. Potentiometers come in many variants and have various use cases. For example, this one in the A4988 stepper motor driver is a surface mounted potentiometer, while the one in my soldering station is used to adjust the temperature of the soldering iron is in true hole package. Some potentiometers are also linear in design. Another important type of potentiometer is this little guy, often used for fine adjustments. We use a small screwdriver to turn the tip of the potentiometer, and as you can see, it requires multiple turns to change the resistance, making it more precise. Let's start with fusible resistors. These components serve as both resistors and fuses, typically used on the input side of the power supplies. When functioning normally, they limit current in the circuit like any other resistor. However, if the current exceeds a certain threshold, the fusible resistor is designed to open the circuit, effectively acting as a fuse to protect other components. Next, we have metal oxide varistors. These are commonly used on the input side of the circuits. MOVs have a specific threshold voltage. For example, this one is rated at 275 volts. Below that voltage, the MOV has a high resistance and doesn't pass current. But when the voltage exceeds the threshold, the MOV resistance drops sharply, allowing current to pass through and protecting the circuit from over voltage. You can find MOVs in almost every power supply, and they are typically connected in parallel with the voltage inputs. Now let's talk about NTCs, which stand for negative temperature coefficient resistors. As the temperature increases, the resistance of an NTC decreases. Although this relationship is not linear, it looks more like this. We also have PTCs, which are similar 
but with a resistance that increases as the temperature rises. NTCs are often used in power supplies to limit inrush current, which is the initial surge of current when a power supply is turned on. This surge is much higher than the normal operating current, can damage components or trip circuit breakers. NTC thermistors limit this inrush current at startup by having a high resistance when cold, which decreases as they self heat allowing normal operation. Another type of NTC is the NTC thermistor, commonly used for temperature sensing. We typically connect this in a voltage divider configuration and connect the midpoint of the divider to our preferred microcontroller's ADC to read the voltage, which correlates to the temperature. For example, my 3D printer uses an NTC thermistor to monitor the temperature of the hot end, rated at 100 kilo ohms, meaning they have a resistance of 100 kilo ohms at room temperature. Next up is the light dependent resistor. As the light level increases, the resistor of the LDR decreases. It's a pretty simple component that can be used in a voltage divider to measure light levels. Pretty handy, right? Now, let's discuss shunt resistors, commonly used in current sensing circuits. These resistors usually have a very low resistance to minimize power loss. For example, I have a 0.5 ohm and 0.1 ohm shunt resistor both with 1% tolerance and high power ratings. We measure the voltage across the resistor and since we know the resistor's value, we can calculate the current using Ohm's law. These are some of the shunt resistors I found in multimeters and they are in true hole packages. Lastly, I want to mention resistor arrays. These components combine multiple resistors into a single package, which allows for more compact and efficient designs in circuits requiring multiple resistors. While I don't typically use them, they do show up in various circuits. Also, I'd like to mention zero-ohm resistors, which are often used as jumper wires on PCBs. This one-sided PCB has tracks only on one side, so engineers use zero-ohm resistors to jump over tracks. Even though I'm calling them resistors, they are essentially just wires in a resistor package. Before we wrap up, I want to clarify something. This component here isn't a resistor, it's an inductor. It looks like a resistor, but it's not, so be careful. Thanks for sticking around until the end. I hope you learned something new today. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them. Take care and see you in the next video.